now we will learn how to make the layout of one bit SRAM cell using NMOS switches this is assignment 3.a so as seen in the schematic in front of us we have two inverters two CMOS inverters which are connected in back to back fashion here so uh, we have this PMOS and this NMOS forming the first inverter and we have this PMOS and this NMOS forming the second inverter and if you can see here that um, the output of first inverter has to be connected to the input of the second inverter while the output of second inverter is to be connected to the input of first inverter so understand that the output of first inverter is available here on metal one layer and the input of second inverter is available here on polysilicon layer so we have to use a metal one to polysilicon contact similarly the output of second inverter is available here on metal one while the input of the first inverter is available here on polysilicon again we have to use a metal one to polysilicon contact also note that we have one NMOS transistor N1 here and another NMOS transistor N2 here and uh, N1 is connected between the right line SRAM underscore WR and the cross coupled inverters while the transistor N2 is connected between the cross coupled inverters and the read line SRAM underscore read the control signal which uh, decides whether the logic value written on the right line will be written into the cell or not is denoted as C and C is the control signal which is given to the interconnection between the gates of N1 and N2. So now in the layout we will make a CMOS inverter, we will copy that and we will connect the outputs and inputs of each other as shown here. Then we will place two NMOS transistors and we will also define the write line and the read line. First we will save this layout as SRAM underscore NMOS switch. Now we have already learnt how to make a CMOS inverter but still we will make it here. MOS generator PMOS NMOS Align them Connect them Apply VDD Apply ground Polarize now we are going to copy this inverter and place it here sufficiently further so there are no DRC errors. Now one thing which can be done is that because we have to place two metal contacts here uh, we can increase the distance between the PMOS and NMOS in this way by putting a cut here and putting a cut here. You can reconnect them yeah. now we will place two my poly to metal contacts one here and another here Now this is the input of I1, output of I2, input of I1, output of I2. We have to connect the output of I1 to input of I2. So we will take metal 1 and we will stretch it from one end. We will take polysilicon 
and we will stretch it from this end. Thus we have connected the output of inverter I1 to the input of I2. Now we will connect the output of I2 to input of I1. Take a metal one. Connect it here. Take polysilicon and connect it here. Sorry. Delete it. We can do a DRC and check whether the errors. There are no design rule errors. So we have connected the two inverters back to back. Now we will bring one NMOS transistor. Put it here. Similarly, we can copy this and we can put another here. Now, what we can do is that we can rotate them like this, rotate them like this. So now, here. So as seen in the schematic here, the drain of N1 is connected to the right line and source of N2 is connected to the read line. So we can make the read and write lines like this. Here and here. Okay. We can move them closer. And please note that this is n1 this is n2 drain of n1 gate of n1 source of n1 drain of n2 gate of n2 source of n2 so we can connect them using metal one so connect the drain of n1 to the right line connect the source of n2 to the read line we can name them we can apply an input say here, we can say it is VDD. We can rename it with the name SRAM underscore right indicate the right line. Similarly, we can put an observation node here and we can give the name as SRAM underscore read. Now, what we have to do is we have to connect the source of n1 to the input of i1 and we have to connect the drain of n2 to the input of i2 so this is the gate of n1 this is the gate of n2 okay so this is the source okay so we have to We have to connect the source of N1 to the input of I1. So this is the input of I1. This is the source of I1. So you have to put a contact. Take complex contacts, poly to metal one. Put it here. And we can connect them. Metal one. Polysilicon. connected now so we have connected the source of n1 to the input of i1 we need to connect now the drain of n2 to the input of i2 okay so we have to connect the drain of n2 to the input of i2 so input of i2 is here we have to again take a contact 
this way we can place it here and we can again take the suitable layers we can take metal one pull it from here to here take polysilicon pull it from here to here So as such the connections are done, no not done, we have forgotten one thing, we have to connect the gate of N1 and N2 together. So, we can take polysilicon and we can connect it like this. Can remove the extra portion so we have defined the right line we have to define we have defined the read line we need to give the control signal C so we can choose a VDD place it here we can rename it as C enter so now let us see if there are DRC errors there are no DRC errors so um, two inverters have been connected in back-to-back -back fashion and uh, N1 and N2 are switches so now we can save this and uh, we have to see the control signal C equal to 1 and we have applied a 1 at the right line so now um, let us see what is the truth table. The function table is if the control signal is 1 and a writer 0, I should get a weak 1. With control signal equal to 1, again, if I write a 1, then it is strong 0. So I repeat, with C equal to 1, if I write a logic 0, I get a weak 1 at the output. If C is equal to 1 again, if I write a 1, I get a strong 0. And if control signal is equal to 0, then I get output as 0. So, first I will make the right line as 0. So, I will double click right line, click ground and say assign and I uh, will have to show it in simulation. Let me check the status, visibility status, simulation, C plus it is in simulation now. So we can see here control signal C is equal to 1, control signal C equal to 1, right line is equal to 0 and output is weak 1. How do we come to know? The output voltage SRAM underscore read is less than VDD that is 1.2 that is a V say it is a weak 1. Now I change the right line to Z 1 save I say simulation C is equal to 1 right line is equal to 1 and output is equal to 0 volts that is strong 0 now we go to the third case wherein we make the control signal C equal to 0 assign simulate we see here the control signal C is equal to 0, right hand equal to 1, output is equal to 0. Let us see what if I give right equal to 0. We see that when control signal C equal to 0, even if I make right equal to 0, output is equal to 0. So when control signal C is equal to 0, input becomes don't care and output is equal to 0. Thus we have made the layout for 1 bit SRAM cell using NMOS switch.